Hello children, in the last class we have studied about population growth. We also studied the various factors which affects the population growth. They are natality, mortality, immigration and e-migration. Today in this class we are going to study about growth model. What exactly is growth model? We will try to understand this with the help of a laboratory condition where we are growing uh, bacteria in a petri dish. So, in the petri dish we are providing all the nutrient medium which is essential for the growth of the bacteria and all the condition uh, which is needed for the growth of the bacteria is provided into this nutrient medium. Now, bacteria is introduced into this nutrient medium. Okay. Initially the bacteria grows slowly. What is the reason? The reason is that this nutrient medium is a new environment for the bacteria. They need certain time for adaptation. Once it is adapted to this environmental condition, they rapidly increase or multiply its number. So, there is a shortage of nutrition as well as space. Again, a large petri dish is provided and all the nutrition which is essential for the growth of the bacteria is taken in the petri dish and this is transferred into petri dish. So, what you can see there is no limiting factor. Continuously the bacteria is getting nutrient medium. So, if we want to plot the growth of this bacteria in a graph, uh, let us take this is y axis and this is the x axis. In the x axis we will write the time and in the y axis we will write population density. Okay. So, the growth of this uh, bacteria when you see initially the bacteria grows slowly and later uh, once it is adapted to the environmental condition the rapidly increases and there is no limiting factor. So, continuously it multiply and form a J shaped growth curve. It, this is known as the J shaped growth curve. Okay. And this type of growth curve is known as exponential growth curve exponential growth curve. So, this type of growth curve we can see only in the laboratory condition. It is uh, this uh, growth curve we cannot see in the natural condition where resources are limited. Here the resources are unlimited. Since they are getting unlimited resources the multiply uh, this bacteria multiply rapidly. Okay. If we want to see the population decrease or increase, the uh, size of the population increase or decrease, let the population size is equal to n, then birth rate per capita is equal to small b, death rate per capita is equal to d, then so the decrease and the increase in the population size at particular uh, time period which is represented by d t is equal to b minus d into n. Okay. So, uh, B minus D is equal to let this B minus D is equal to R. What is R? R is the intrinsic rate, intrinsic rate of natural increase. It is the intrinsic rate of natural increase. When we see the Darwin's principle that is natural selection, fittest one that is the nature selects the fittest one. 
fittest is not the physical fitness it is the reproductive fitness so here uh, the reproductive fittest ones are selected so the, we can write this equation as dn by dt is equal to instead of b minus d we can take r n okay so this is the equation for exponential growth curve now this equation can be written in calculus form when we use the calculus form we will be will get an equation like this nt is equal to n0 e r t where nt is the population density after time t and n0 is a population density at time 0 and e is the log value r is the intrinsic rate of natural increase t is the time period okay so this is the calculus equation okay so what we have seen there is a j shaped growth curve and this growth curve we can see only in the laboratory condition and where the resources are unlimited the equation is dn by dt is equal to rn uh, in the calculus form we can write like this nt is equal to n0 e raised to rt second growth model is logistic growth here this growth we can see in the natural condition where resources are the limiting factor now we'll uh, see the growth model we'll plot this growth in a graph suppose it is the y axis and this is the x axis so here we'll take time in the x axis and in the y axis we'll take population density Suppose a new organism is introduced into the natural uh, in a particular ecosystem what happen initially they show slow growth why this organism require a certain time to adopt that environmental condition once it is adopted to the environmental condition it rapidly increases like this okay but in nature there is a limiting factor which we represent it as a carrying capacity which is denoted as k so what is actually a carrying capacity it is the maximum number of organism which is supported by that ecosystem okay beyond that they can't support so k is the carrying capacity as soon as it reaches to this carrying capacity the growth rate uh, growth rate in decreases and they shows a steady growth so this shape uh, of growth is known as h shaped s shaped growth curve it is known as the s shaped growth curve or you can say sigmoid growth curve okay now we can divide this into different phases initially this one up to this is known as lag phase where the growth is very slow and up to this from here to here it is exponential growth or we can say accelerated growth accelerated phase once it reaches to the carrying capacity what happen the growth declines so up to here we can mark it as deceleration deceleration phase deceleration phase and from here to here there is a steady growth 
Okay, so these are the different phases of the growth. You can see a lag phase where initially they are, uh, the growth is very slow and they uh, there is an accelerated growth. Once it is adapted to the environmental condition, they rapidly increases its uh, number. Carrying capacity plays a limiting factor which declines the growth and after that there is a steady growth. If we want to see the increase and the decrease in the population size at particular time, dn by dt is equal to r n k minus n divided by k. So, this is the uh, equation for logistic growth curve. Here, r is the intrinsic growth, uh, uh, intrinsic rate of natural increase, n is the population size, k is the carry capacity. So, this type of growth you can see in the natural ecosystem. Okay? Is it clear children? So, what is the difference between exponential and logistic growth curve? Logistic growth curve is seen only in the natural uh, ecosystem, but exponential growth curve we can see only in the laboratory condition where resources are unlimited. Here the resources are limited. Is it clear children? Our next topic is population interaction. So, what is population interaction? Here two species interact with each other. Okay. This interaction may be a beneficial one or detrimental one or neutral one. Beneficial, we represent this in the form of a positive sign. Detrimental means harmful, uh, harmful to the species. So, it is represented by means of a minus sign and neutral, it is neither beneficial for the species nor it is uh, harmful for the species. So, it is represented as 0. Okay. We will see the first uh, population interaction. The first interaction is predation. Here we can see two species, one act as a predator, another act as a prey. So, here one is a predator, another is a prey. Okay. So, here the predator are benefited and prey is harmed. So, we will give the symbol positive to the predators and negative to the prey. When we talk about prey predators relationship, one thing, one example always comes in our mind that is the example of deer and tiger, where tiger is a predator and deer is a prey. Another example is plant and herbivores, where plant is a prey and herbivores are predators. Actually, these predators act as a channel for energy flow. It act as a channel for energy flow. How? Plants synthesize food by taking energy from the sunlight and this food is uh, consumed by the herbivores and herbivores are consumed by the carnivores. So, there is a flow of energy. Again, this predators helps to control the population of the prey, it control population of prey by controlling its population what happen? It maintain the uh, ecosystem in a balanced condition. Let us see one example. Now, in your screen you can see prickly pear cactus. This cactus is an exotic species introduced into Australia in the early 1920s. They start spreading rapidly into millions of hectares as there is no predator for this to control the spread of the cactus. So, there is no predator was there to control its spread. Okay. Now, in the next slide you can see Cactoblastic Cactorum. This Cactoblastic Cactorum is a moth which is introduced into this place in order to control its growth. So, 
this uh, moth act as a predator which feeds on this particular cactus. Okay. So, by feeding on this cactus they control the growth of the uh, prey that is prickly pear cactus. Now, prey also modify themselves to defend from the predators. One example we can see that is the monarch butterfly. In your slide you can see the monarch butterfly. This butterfly is highly distasteful to their predators. Their predators were birds because of a special chemical found in the body. They acquire this chemical during the caterpillar stage by feeding on the poisonous weed. Again we can see uh, plants are also a prey, but they cannot run away from the predators. Okay. So, they also defend uh, from the predators by modifying its body like this. A example is cactus. Cactus modified itself and they produce certain thorns and spines on, on its surface, thus preventing the um, attack of herbivores. Next example we can see another plant that is known as Calatropis. Calatropis is a plant produce highly poisonous cardiac glycosides which even cause the death of cattle or goat. That is why cattle or goat never found browsing on this plant. So, here we can see predators are so efficient they over exploit the prey. So, in order to protect themselves they modified themselves. The second population interaction is competition. Here we will take uh, this competition may be between the same species or between different species for the same resource. Okay. We will take species A and species B. They shows interaction. By this interaction, both the species are harmed. So, that is why a negative sign is uh, put uh, here. Okay. Now, we will see, we'll see certain examples. American lake visiting flamingos and resident fish compete for common food that is zooplankton. So, this flamingos are different species and fish are fish is also a different species. Okay. So, they compete for the same resource that is the zooplankton. Next we can see in your screen a huge tortoise that is known as Abingdon tortoise. This tortoise was found in Galapagos island. Due to his huge body they are very slow. Okay. So, what happened when goats were introduced on this island, goat are competitively superior species feeding on the same resource. So, they eliminated all the tortoise. So, this is also a competition. Next uh, in your screen you can see uh, warblers. There are different varieties of warblers. They avoid competition by living in a particular place. Mark Arthur showed that they avoid competition by living on the same tree. Some species will feed on the flower, some will feed on the fruits, some on the insects of the tree. So, by adopting different resources, they avoided this competition. Okay. So, we have seen the various types of competition. So, warbler is a special uh, bird, they avoid competition by adopting different resources. The third population interaction is parasitism. Here two species are there, one act as a parasite, another act as a host. Here the parasites are benefited by this interaction and host is harmed. This parasite drives nutrition from the host. Okay. Now, this, this parasite may be we can divide into three, they are ecto parasite, 
endoparasite and broad parasite. Now here ectoparasite means they live on the surface of the host and drives nutrition. Examples we can see uh, the lice on human ticks on dogs and leech in uh, are found on various animals. So, they all drives uh, nutrition from the host. They are having a special type of mouth that is piercing and sucking type of mouth. Okay. So, this is known as the ectoparasite. Next is endoparasite. Endoparasite live inside the host body and drives the nutrition. Examples are liver fluke, Second is uh, tapeworm and plasmodium. These are the certain uh, parasite which lives inside the body. They are, they, their bodies also get modified. They are having a hook and sucker type of mouth. With the help of hook, they hold the wall of the uh, host and suck the nutrition. Okay. They are having two hosts for the completion of their life cycle. Here in liver fluke, they are having uh, human being and fish or snails. Here tapeworm, human being as well as pig, plasmodium, human being and mosquitoes. So, they need two hosts for completing their um, life cycle. Okay. Now, their digestive system is not such much complicated because they are um, getting a, uh, that is prepared food directly they uh, that is digested food they are getting they are directly drives the nutrition from the host ok. So, this is known as the ectoparasite and broad parasite broad parasite you can see the example uh, we can see the in birds uh, example of broad parasite is cuckoo cuckoo lay egg in the nest of the crows. Cuckoo is a act as a parasite, they never uh, make their own nest, they lay egg in the crow's nest. Their eggs are uh, so similar that crows get confused, uh, that is why they are not ejected from the nest. So, this is the parasitism, parasite and host relationship. The fourth interaction is known as commensalism. In commensalism, we will take two species, species A and species B. Here, one species is benefited by their interaction and an other, another species is neither benefited nor harm. They are act as a neutral. We will see certain examples. In your screen, you can see sea anemone and clown fish. Interaction between sea anemone that has a stinging tentacles. You can see stinging tentacles and clownfish that lives among them. The fish get protection from the predators which stay away from the stinging tentacles of the sea anemone. The anemone does not appear to drive any benefit by hosting the clownfish. Okay. So, this is the commensalism in Next example is barnacles growing on the back of the whale. You can see the black uh, body that is the whale's uh, back of the whale on which you can see a patch that is the barnacles. Barnacles growing on the back of the whale, uh, they get protection from the whale while the whale do not drive any benefits from the barnacles. So, this is this interaction is known as common cellism. The next interaction is mutualism. Here you can see we'll, we are taking two species, species A and species B. Okay. Both the species are benefited by this interaction. This type of interaction is known as symbiotic association. We will see the example. The first one is lichen. 
Lichen is a association of fungi and algae or cyanobacteria. Okay. Fungi takes moisture from the atmosphere and provide this moisture to algae. Algae synthesize food and provide uh, this food to the fungus. It is a symbiotic association. Second is mycorrhizae. It is an association of fungal hyphae in the roots of higher plants. In the roots of plants. Here this fungal hyphae takes minerals from the soil, especially phosphorus and give it to the plant and plant provide food to the fungus. Now, the third symbiotic association here you can see both are benefited by this association. Third is pollinator and plant or you can say the flower. Okay. So, the pollinators may be an insect or a bee or a bird or animals, they visit plants or flower why in order to collect nectar and pollen grains. By doing this they pollinate the flower, both are benefited plant flower is pollinated as well as and they are get uh, the pollinators get reward of nectar as well as the pollen grain. Now, in this interaction some act as a cheater. What is a cheater? Cheaters are those pollinators, they visit the flower, but they do not pollinate the flowers. That type of pollinators are known as cheaters. Again you can see another thing in this pollination, uh, this uh, relation between, between pollinator and plant that co-evolution, co-evolution. The example of co-evolution we will see uh, in the slide. In your screen you can see a Mediterranean orchid of fris. The flower of this orchid are exactly similar to the female bee. Male bee sits on the orchid flower thinking that it is a female bee. It do pseudo copulation with the flower. During that process the bee is dusted with pollen grain from the flower. When the same bee pseudo copulate with another flower, it transfer pollen to it and thus pollinate the flower. If the female bee's color pattern change even slightly for any reason during evolution, pollination success will be reduced unless the orchid flower co-evolve to maintain the resemblance of its petal to the female bee. Here we can see a co-evolution, co-evolution is operated. We can see the co-evolutions example again in fig and moth. Okay. Here uh, actually hypanthodium is an inflorescence, it is not a flower, it is an inflorescence. Here you can see the female flower and here you can see a sterile flower and here male flower. This moth visit here in this uh, hypanthodium in order to lay egg. So, while visiting in this flower, so what happened their uh, body is dusted with pollen grain and they leg in this hypanthodium and they again visit another flower. During this process what happened they pollinate the inflorescence and here they lay egg and the egg hatches when the larvae comes out or uh, they drives nutrition from the seeds of this plant that is hypanthodium. Okay. The hypanthodium is converted into fig fruits. Okay. So, this is a co-evolution. Again you can see the relationship between yucca plant as well as moth. So, there is a special type of moth that visits the yucca flower. Now, what happen if suppose the uh, moth get evolved what will happen the yucca plant also get extinct. Moth if it is extinct so, what will happen? Yucca plant get, uh, will also get extinct because yucca plant is pollinated by this moth only. Okay? So, what we have studied in this uh, class 
population interaction, we have studied various types of interaction like parasitism, competition, predation and uh, commensalism and mutualism. I, I hope you might have understood all this topic nicely. Now you take care of yourself, be safe and work hard. Thank you.